you stated, and I, I want to be sure I understand your statement, you do not believe that a Jesus Christ, a man named Jesus Christ, lived on this earth. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Okay, now, can you help me understand how if uh, a respected uh, uh, ancient historian named Josephus, whom I'm sure you're well aware of, uh, specifically named a man that lived as Jesus, that was named Jesus Christ, and in several, uh, you know, parts of his, his chronicles, I would imagine, would be the word to use. How would you explain that, sir? And he had no, and okay, he did not believe in Christ. Okay, that's a good question, but um, okay. we've got time. Go ahead. All right. Uh, that's a good question. Um, first of all, keep in mind, Josephus uh, was born after Jesus is supposed to have died. And so he is not writing as an eyewitness. Now, I did not claim that eyewitness accounts are the only way that history can be written. But I want to make it clear that Josephus was not an eyewitness. He wrote late enough, he wrote at a time when the uh, Gospels as we know them and a number of other Gospels that perhaps you don't know about were being written or had already been written. And so if those passages in Josephus were indeed written by Josephus, it would reflect nothing more than the fact that he was familiar with Christian propaganda, which already at that time, by the end of the first century, uh, was quite widespread. And so actually we would not be too surprised that, in fact, we would expect a lot more historians uh, to mention something, at least just by report, from uh, the uh, evangelists uh, that were sent out. Um, as a matter of fact, however, you perhaps are aware that the passages in Josephus have been very strongly disputed as being Christian interpolations. The Christians were looking very hard to try to find other documentation, other proof. It was embarrassing that the only proof we had was in the Christian writings themselves. And so a very large number of ancient writers were uh, altered, their writings were altered, and a number of things were actually created too, like the supposed correspondence between Seneca and Paul to give a Stoic philosopher's blessing upon St. Paul. Uh, it is quite clear to me that the famous uh, Testimonium Flavianum uh, that uh, we all talk about is indeed a Christian interpolation. Uh, it intrudes in the text of Josephus and the idea that there was actually something written by Josephus about it which was then made more Christian won't stand because the whole thing intrudes in the text. Um, Jesus is mentioned twice by Josephus. This can't be explained away as, as uh, a result of Josephus knowing only Christian sources because in his Antiquity of the Jews, chapter 20, section 200, he gives information about Jesus, uh, uh, about the New Testament church not contained in the New Testament. He tells about the martyrdom of Jesus' brother James. He couldn't have gotten this out of the New Testament because James is still alive in the book of Acts, uh, uh, and therefore he's obviously in contact with authentic historical information. Uh, it's not an interpolation either because it doesn't intrude. The other passage is connected with two incidences which are uh, confirmed by Suetonius and uh, Tacitus. Also, Josephus' stylistic traits are present in that passage. Uh, there was definitely, I think, a Jesus passage in Josephus, even if maybe it was subsequently dressed up a little bit by Christian uh, copyists. Uh, R.T. France says it seems safe the, to assume Josephus spoke of Jesus' wisdom and teaching some people called him Messiah, and this, I think, is a consensus of scholarship. 